when it comes to the divisions of the Gote 13, I think it's definitely fair to say that some get a little less exposure than others. And I think the ninth division is definitely one of the more slept on um, out of the 13 of them. And that's even with Hisagi being essentially one of the most popular vice captains. Certainly where the captains are concerned, I don't ever feel like the ninth division has ever really lived up to the popularity of its peers. You know, Tosin, as cool as he was, as interesting and unique as he was, was never all that charismatic, and I think that held him back in regards to particularly Gein and Eisen when he betrayed the Soul Society. And I think the same is essentially true of today's topic, Kensei Muguruma, the Vizard, uh, the both current and former captain of the 9th Division. That's not to say Kensei's not interesting character, he is. Uh, I think most of his problems come from a lack of exposure, which makes the 9th Division feel underrepresented. Um, but in this video, we're going to be looking at the character of Kensei, one of the Vizards and currently a captain of the Gote 13. Take a look at his role in the story, his personality, his fights, his relationships, all that sort of thing and just take a look at the character of Kensei on the whole. Before we begin, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do that now. If you're a Bleach fan, you are in the perfect place for content like this every single week. And if you want to go even further with the support for the channel, you can now become a channel member by pressing join down below, and that gets you access to a pretty cool little badge, and also access to members-only polls that will help to decide some of the future videos that come out. So Kensei, like I said, is one of the Vizards, and unfortunately these days that comes with a certain amount of baggage. Um, this idea of missed potential, this idea of the fact that he could have done so much more with such an awesome design. And Kensei does have a really cool design like almost all of the Vizards do. His white hair helps him really stand out from the rest of his contemporaries. And I love his kind of gruff, no-nonsense approach to things. The fact that he feels almost like a drill sergeant, particularly in the way he addresses characters like young Hisagi back in Turn Back the Pendulum. As far as Kensei's appearance goes, I've always liked it. I mean, I like most characters in Bleach as far as their looks go. Kubo is a master at character design, making every single character feel completely unique, at least on the surface. And Kensei is absolutely no different. Um, he goes through a number of different hairstyles. You know, he has the really kind of almost floppy Mohican in term at the pendulum to really, really short hair in the Iran Karak, and then kind of taking it back again to um, the similar style to 100 years ago, but a little more refined in the Thousand Year Blood War. But what really struck me the most about Kensei's appearance when I was kind of researching him for this video is how dramatically it changes. Um, you know, I went back to the Iran Karak, and because my kind of most recent memories of Bleach are still the Thousand Year Blood War, I saw Kensei and I was like, this is a completely different character. Um, not only does he look 20 years younger, he looks more rebellious, more edgy. Um, obviously, he's wearing human clothes at this point in the story, but he looks totally different. He has these cargo pants on, he's got some kind of vest on, almost like a, I don't even know what, he, what it is, but he, he looks totally different. Um, and even in the, th in the term about the pendulum arc, he looks really, really young. And again, I think it's the hair that probably does that. But you then, once the time skip hits, he ages about 20 years, I feel, and becomes a man, essentially, like a, a fully grown man, where he was like some kind of edgy teenager before in the Iran Karak. But I like them. I like them both. Uh, I like all of his spectrum of designs. My favorite is the Thousand Year Blood War one. I like him more serious. You know, I like him exerting a bit more authority with his look. I think it really suits him. But he retains that punkish nature with the earrings, with the hairstyle. I love the way he has this almost like metal belt around his waist in place of the traditional sash. I just really think he does look really cool. He's not my favourite visor. My favourite visor is still Rose. Um, you know, especially post time skip again, Rose gets a huge glow up as well. But Kensei, really awesome looking character. And you know, as for his personality, he's not really the deepest character in the series. He's well known for having a pretty short fuse, getting very angry very quickly, not really knowing how to handle maybe some, shall we say, more emotional situations, like when Hisagi is just crying his eyes out in front of him, he doesn't really know how to make him feel better, which I think was a really nice character moment for both of them. Um, and obviously his main partner in the series is Mashiro, his well, I say former vice-captain, his current super vice-captain. 
Um, and she's the polar opposite, which is something Kubo has always done really well. These dynamic duos where one of them is completely different from the other. Kensei is the straight man. You know, he's very self-serious. Um, everything is a shouting match. Um, he's no nonsense, quick to anger, brass tacks kind of guy. Whereas Mashiro is just superfluous. She is whining all the time. She's crying all the time, throwing tantrums and hissy fits. And Kensei does kind of come across as this babysitter, which I think is a vibe that works really well. And it creates a unique, funny and interesting dynamic for these two characters, which is something we can get into a bit more when we reach the relationship section. But Kensei's personality is a fun one. While not the deepest character in Bleach, I think he really plays well off other characters. The way he's quick to anger um, and he's very straight laced means he works really well with characters like Lisa, um, you know, who is trying to, shall we say, claim that her hobbies are not quite what other people think they are. And Kensei just calls it out straight away. That sort of thing I really like. Now, then on to Kensei's role in the story, which is the meat of this video. And his chapter lifespan is pretty lengthy. Being a Vizard, he's introduced relatively early on, somewhere around the first third, the end of the first third of the story. His first chapter appearance being 214, and then his final appearance being all the way on the penultimate chapter of the series, 685. And so, you know, he covers a lot of ground. He's in the Iran car art, the term at the pendulum arc, fake Karakura, brief appearance in Lost Agent, and the Thousand Year Blood War arc. So while definitely the definition of I would say a tertiary character, very much a supporting character, even though he's a captain. He is always around, and I, I do like that. And being one of the Vizards to become a captain again, he is, you know, considerably more uh, visible than other Vizards who remained in the human world. So, you know, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, while it didn't necessarily treat these characters all that well, they still get way more exposure than Love, Hachi, Hiori, Lisa that remain in the human world. And Kensei is one of them. And, and, and I think it kind of works for him. But it's interesting, you know, like I said, I was going back and doing research on Kensei for this video. And it really opened my eyes as to the limited role the Vizards actually play in the Iran car arc, or at least the first half of that arc. Their role is literally to train Ichigo to help him master his inner hollow, and they don't leave the warehouse. You know, apart from Shinji and Hiori, the others don't ever leave the warehouse. Um, I guess in that way it's comparable to Execution. You know, they do play very similar roles, except obviously Execution revealed to be villains. The Vizards, although their motives are questionable at the start, are revealed to be firmly good guys later on. Um, and, you know, Kensei... Unfortunately, when you get to a character like Kensei, who joins the series as part of a group, as most new characters do in Bleach, there will always be members of that group who stand out, who are, who are picked out by Kubo to be major characters, and the rest are kind of forever supporting characters. And Kensei is one of those supporting characters, so he never really takes on anything too challenging from a narrative standpoint. Um, he is there to help Ichigo learn to master his hollow. He gets a good fight scene with hollow Ichigo. You know, you get some cool moments. He comes in to save, I think it's, I think it's Lisa. I can't remember exactly. Um, but he comes in, he elbows him in the chest and you get these really nice moments as well where, you know, I think he, he uses something that almost looks like a, a Cero or a Bala. Um, I don't actually remember if it's confirmed what it is. I don't think it's a Tachikaze ability. Um, which we'll get into in a sec. But he, yeah, he gets really cool moments. He like cuts off Ichigo's arm and then Ichigo high speed regenerates and attacks him with this really weird hollow reatsu. It's cool stuff. And one of the things I've always loved about Kensei, going back briefly to his personality, is his no-nonsense attitude. And he's always willing to just cut the talk and go straight into the fighting. Both times he comes up against a major opponent, being Wonderweiss and Masked Masculine, he instantly uses Bankai. It's a really cool little thing where he's always just like, I'm not going to waste your time. Bankai. I really like that. And you kind of see a, a semblance of that here against Hollow Ichigo. He's already using Tachikaze. He's already using his Shikai. And, you know, in a series where it takes a lot to get characters to sometimes show what they can do, it's really refreshing to have a character who's a bit more forthcoming with their abilities. 
And of course, speaking of his abilities, Kensei is a master Hakuda expert, and that is on full display again against Ichigo in the training session. But we also get really nice character moments for all of the Vizards during this warehouse section. There's a funny bit where like Kensei is cooking everyone dinner, and it's just a really random moment for his character. But again, it does kind of feel like he's in the military, and I like that. I think it really works. He's like, you know, banging the pots and pans together, getting everyone to kind of come together for dinner while wearing this apron. It's the kind of character comedy that Kubo is really good at. It's a bit more subtle than just an out there joke, but it, you know, you see Kent saying you don't ever expect him to be acting this way, but it's a nice little thing that does add a touch of depth to the character. But I actually think Kensei comes into his own a hundred years ago during the turn back the pendulum mini arc, uh, where Kensei, as the captain of the 9th Division, is leading the investigation into the mysterious disappearances that are going on. And of course, one thing you might not know is the 9th Division is primarily all about investigations. Most divisions have like secondary jobs, they have they have roles in the Soul Society, obviously. Two are the Omnits Kiddo, 12 is research and development. I believe Six looks after the history of the Soul Society or something like that, or well, that might be a Kuchki specific thing, but, and you know, four are the healers, and nine are investigations, and that's kind of where uh, I believe the Seireite Bulletin stems from. Um, I don't believe that Tozen or Kensei ever really had much to do with the Bulletin, it's very much, I think, a Hisagi pet project, which obviously is where can't for your own world basically gets his entire storyline from um, but it's really cool seeing Kensei leading the investigation into the disappearances in Turn About the Pendulum and of course Turn About the Pendulum also introduces us to the Kensei and Hisagi uh, relationship which in my opinion is a weird one um, and it's, it's just weirdly written and it's, we'll get into it obviously a little bit later on but you get to see the origin of Hisagi's 69 tattoo Kensei has the same thing on his chest, um, the six referencing, I believe, Muguruma, his surname, the kanji for six is in there somewhere, I think, and then the nine is the ninth division, which is where that comes from. Uh, we also get to see Kensei Zanpakuto Tachikaze in, it's probably, in my opinion, best showing in the series against a massive hollow. And for the longest time, we all kind of thought it was essentially explosive, you know, like razor whips of wind. And... You know, it does have wind in the name, but I don't think it really is that. I feel like it was kind of confirmed with his Bankai in the Thousand Year Blood War arc that it's more about explosions. You know, it's more about detonation. Um, and it seems like he does essentially create these, like, ropes, and then they detonate. That's mostly what it's all about, and you really see that with the hollow, where he cuts up the hollow and it just blows up where each of the lines are created. Either way, it's pretty neat. You know, it becomes a almost like a small army knife... Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's, again, very unique, but most characters in Bleach have totally unique Zanpak toe. Um, and I think Tachikaze does kind of get overlooked in many respects because it doesn't really have a great showing. Like I said, basically its best moments are against a random hollow. Um, because Kensei never really properly fights anyone with it, which is kind of weird to think about. Uh, but like I said, he's very no-nonsense. So if it comes down to fighting a proper person, he goes straight to Bankai. We get a really cool moment in Turn About the Pendulum as well where we discover who the real villains are. And obviously it's Aizen uh, et al. But it's really cool how Kensei and his team are obviously the first to discover this because they are uh, encapsulated in everything that happens. And it's really, really cool how Kubo does this sinister fake out about who the villain is. You know, for a split second, Kensei thinks it's one of the... Uh, guys he's gone, gone out on the patrol with, but then the guy also dies in front of him. And there's this really neat, like, horror vibe with Term at the Pendulum, especially in this area, where Kensei's whole squad is essentially taken out, and Tozen uses his Bankai to cover the area in darkness, take away Kensei's senses, and then stab him through the back. Um, and obviously Tozen is also a member of the Ninth Division at this point, so he's betraying his captain here without a second thought. Um, you obviously never see... Tozen and Kensei really interact on screen, so it doesn't really mean anything. I think they have one line in terms of the pendulum or something like that, but I really thought Kensei would join Hisagi and Komamura and fighting Tozen, but I kind of get the impression Kensei's like not that bothered about it, which, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about... He, he was like properly betrayed by his vice captain, you know, and obviously Shinji and Aizen have this history, but with Tozen and Kensei, it's almost kind of glossed over. 
He is mentioned briefly in the Thousand Year Blood Warrock by Kensei, which is something we'll get into because that's also a weird scene. Um, but yeah, the, the term of the pendulum stuff is really good, even if it doesn't seem to affect Kensei in the future. Um, but like I said, there's a really cool horror vibe here. Kensei is the first point of contact when discovering who the true villains are, and I love how it's portrayed both in the manga and the anime. Um, and as Kensei is the first one to go down, along with Mashiro, he is ground zero for the holification experiments, essentially, and you get to see a fully holified Kensei, and it's really, really cool. You know, I remember reading it weekly, and I remember I was I was quite young back then, and I didn't really know what was going on. I think I remember being like, what is... It, I didn't kind of clock at first that it was Kensei, the monster they were seeing, with like these weird pipes coming out of him, even though he has a Hayori on everything, and it's so obviously him. I remember being like, what the what on earth is going on here? But it's actually really cool. You know, you see essentially his fully hollow fight state. Um, and it's awesome. It's incredibly powerful. He beats up basically all of the vi or you know, the soon-to-be Visard captains and vice captains. Mashiro is also fully hollow fight. It's a great fight. There's a real sense of foreboding and impending doom in Term at the Pendulum, which I think is really good. You know, that that Term at the Pendulum is amazingly written. I want to do a video on it obviously at some point. Um, but it's really well done, and Kensei's monstrous form is, is a good, a big part of that. You get to see, like, a hollow really letting loose against some captains. And obviously, because of this moment, Kensei's mask is one of the earliest Vizard masks we see. Obviously, we saw Shinji and Hiori beforehand, but here we see Kensei and Mashiro. And when it comes to the big final battle in the fake Karakura Town arc, it does kind of feel like Kensei is unfortunately sidelined again. Kensei and Mashiro during this fight always felt to me uh, like the biggest uh, indicator that Kubo had too many good guys. Too many good guys and too few villains. You know, most people are paired off and it's already too three versus one in some instances, you know, three versus Barragon, um, three versus Stark, Rose, Love, and then Kuroki returns. Um, and then you've just got Kensei and Mashiro like off doing nothing, like just cleaning up Gillians essentially. Um, and obviously Mashiro takes on Hulia and then takes on Wonderwai. So they do have an opponent, but their fight is, you know, Kubo obviously doesn't pay anywhere near as much attention to it as the Espada, which is fair enough. Um, Wonderweiss is an interesting character, but was never treated with the same reverence as the Espada. Um, and, and, you know, Kensei is not one of the captains who really gets much spotlight, as I mentioned already. But it is cool seeing him in action with the rest of the Visards, taking down the Menos Grande, again, stabbing them and then causing them to detonate. Really cool stuff. And using his Hakudo abilities, his Sandbag Beat, which is his uh, move which just constantly punches people, which will return in Thousand Year Blood War arc. It's really nice to see. Uh, what's probably my favourite thing about Kensei in this arc, however, his limited screen time aside, is the real... You get to see a real, almost almost a new side to his relationship with Mashiro. Like, it's very obvious he cares a lot about her. They were obviously very close 100 years ago, but she comes off as mostly an annoyance to him. And he's kind of willing to let her do her own thing, but he will never let it get too far. And so when it looks like she's in trouble, basically her mask breaks, she gets overconfident, Wonderwise punches her in the face. And the moment that happens, Kensei is there and he just grabs Wonderwise's hand. And, he, and you know, even though he, and he, he's carrying Mashiro's limp body and, you know, although he's like, yeah, you're an idiot, he's also not going to let Wonderwise get away with it. And I have to say that I, I absolutely love, I love the OST that plays during... Um, this moment in the anime is really good. I remember it coming out of nowhere. I feel like it felt like not what I was expecting at all, but it works really well. And then Kensei's like, I'm not mature enough to hold back against kids. And he just starts wailing on Wonderwise. The fight goes on for a bit longer in the anime, but it leads to the same conclusion where Kensei uses Bankai. Again, in the manga, very much, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to use Bankai. He does mess around with Shikai a bit more. It's a filler extension of the fight in the anime um, but in the manga it's very much true to his character he uses Bankai immediately and you know you get a nice moment with Kensei and Mashiro where she's like are you going to avenge me and he's like no don't be stupid I'm just going to teach a kid a lesson who's kind of getting ahead of himself a bit and it's a real shame because this is the last time you see either of these characters in the fake Karakura Town arc Kensei goes into battle against Wonderwise and I've always assumed he loses because you never see him again. And you do see Wonderwise again. Wonderwise appears in, behind Yamamoto in his resurrection, Extinguir. I've always 
thought that this was this is one of the biggest examples in my opinion of Kubo just kind of running out of time for characters um because I've never I've never understood how Wonder Weiss could actually defeat Kensei because Wonder Weiss has been shown to be nearly not not useless you know he's pulled off a couple of crazy things in the past like taking out Ukitake out of nowhere Wonder Ice is a very spur of the moment character. If he catches you off guard, you're in big trouble. But when you've actually got a fight going with a regular rhythm, he seems to be nearly useless. Like when Mashiro is just throwing him around. Wonder Ice is very much if he catches you off guard, you're in trouble. When he grabs Ma- Mashiro, she gets in. She feels like she gets in trouble. When he punches her, she gets in trouble. You know, but Kensei is quite a measured individual. He uses Barnkai. He can see Wonder Weiss coming at him. I have a hard time understanding how that fight went down. Especially since when you find out that Wonder Weiss is not actually special for any reason other than to stop Ryujin Jacker. So it's not like he can stop any other Shinigami for any reason. He has everything carved away just to deal with Yamamoto Zanpak Toe. What I could have believed... And what would have potentially made him ridiculously broken would be if Wonder Weiss had had everything taken from him so he could extinguish any Zanpakuto. Then I can understand why he would have defeated Kensei. But as it is, it's a mystery we'll never know the answer to. I've always assumed that Kensei lost that fight because Wonder Weiss shows up later on. Um, but unfortunately, that is the last time we see him in the Iran arc. And then we have the time skip. We have the lost agent arc. And at the very end of this arc, I think most of us have kind of assumed that the Vizards would be back in as captains. Um, and there's a nice little panel that shows Yamamoto talking to the group, but from a particular angle that only shows you the foot of the captain closest to him, which on that side of the of the meeting hall has to be the third division. So many of us were like, someone's standing there. Someone's taken over the third division spot. Um, and we were right. It was the Vizards, Kensei, Rose and Shinji are back in. Um, and it's cool because Kensei is the one who probably gets to introduce this. He's there waiting for Ichigo when Ichigo returns. And you get to see his updated design. Although I think his design updates again going into the Thousand Year Blood Walk. Ever so slightly, his metal belt looks a little bit different, for instance. But it's really cool to see him here. And you know, it's a nice moment with Ichigo. Um, I think it's the last time they ever speak. But I don't think they've barely even spoken beforehand. But yeah, it's cool that Kensei basically introduces that they're back in as captains. And then the Thousand Year Blood Bore arc. I've talked in depth about the Vizard usage in this arc. It's not good. Um, everyone knows that. Most of the Vizards are underutilized or used in just bad ways, uh, which is a shame because they're all really unique, have really cool powers and whatnot. It would have been really cool to see them actually fight Quincy. However, on the basis of the, on the basis that Kensei is one of the returned captains, he does get a slightly better showing than most of his peers. Um, you know, he shows up very briefly in the first invasion. We get a lovely moment of, with him in 515 uh, Relics when he is at the, essentially the mini funeral for Yamamoto, but where all the captains have you know, gathered around Yamamoto, shattered Zanpakuto, probably one of the best scenes in the series, uh, where basically Soifon is just railing on everyone around her and Kensei tells her to be quiet because she's embarrassing herself and Soifon says, you know, you're, it's so easy for you to feel all right because you had you hated the old man anyway, you're probably jumping for joy that he's dead, obviously completely out of line. Uh, Soifon really shows her immaturity during some of these early scenes, but it does help create good conflict. And it's cool because Kensei's like, what the hell did you just say? Like, he's about to rage out. Because, you know, Kensei, he probably doesn't hate Yamamoto. You know, all the Vizards were reinstated. Yes, it was bad and terrible what happened to them in the turn about the pendulum. Uh, but, you know, you kind of have to see it from both sides. The situation looked incredibly bad for them. Aizen has the power of perfect hypnosis. No one could have ever called him out on it. Um, so... Bad things happened to everyone, but the Vizards made a conscious choice to come back and help in the war effort against Dyson. and they'd made their decision. And then Yamamoto gave them the ultimate uh, pardon, essentially, and let them take, even take their places back. Um, so it's unlikely they hated him. Uh, so I like that Kensei kind of calls her out on that. That's a nice moment. And then we get a really nice training scene between Kensei and Hisagi during the calm before the storm moment, essentially. And it's really nice that we got this because Kubo makes it clear that Hisagi kind of reveres Kensei. Um, you know, he's even got a tattoo on his face, the same iconography that Kensei has. Um, so it's really nice that after becoming his vice captain and I assume getting the position he's always wanted 
um, by Kensei's side, it's nice that they actually get some time together. It's not a lot. Um, it's not a lot of time together, but it's not bad. It's more than Rose and Kira get. Uh, they get some nice moments, and this is one of them. It's a bit of a weird one, though, because basically this whole scene is about getting Hisagi Bankai, mastering Bankai in time for the next Sternritter invasion so that he can use it in case Kensei loses his. And it's just so weird that this scene just doesn't go anywhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. And I know what you're about, you're about to say. You're about to comment. Kens, uh, Hisagi's Bankai is the entire, one of the major focuses of Can't Fear Around World. That's true, but what I really care about is the manga at the end of the day. And it doesn't go anywhere in the manga. And it's it's a weird, almost like meta statement from Kubo, the whole Bankai situation with Hisagi. Because we have this whole bit here where Kensei and Mashiro are trying to train him to get Bankai. Then the next time Kensei meets Hisagi, which we can probably just jump straight to, is after Hisagi has already been defeated by Mask. And Kubo knowingly has Kensei say, defeated before he can even show the fruits of his training. What a pathetic excuse for a vice captain. So, okay, we're not getting his Bankai here. And then we just never get his Bankai. And then at the very end of the series, in chapter 685, they make a big joke about the fact that maybe Hisaki hasn't learned Bankai at all. And he's protesting that he has. And Kensei's like, I've never seen it. And it's just really weird. It's really, really weird. It's such a weird situation where Kubo just doesn't show it. But, you know, it does show up in Can't Feel Your Own World, so... But anyway, it's a nice scene between the two of them. They have a couple of nice scenes like that. Um, but like I said, the next bit you, you see Kensei is when Hisagi has been taken out by Sermata S. Mask to Masculine. Kensei gets a great entrance here, by the way. Uh, Kubo affords him actually a really cool moment where Mask is about to just stomp on Hisagi's head, crush it underfoot, and Kensei stops it with his own foot. Like, he just stands there, hands in his pockets, and puts his foot out and stops Mask. Really cool moment, actually. Um quietly badass i like how it's done um but then in typical kensei fashion he basically activates bankai immediately we get to see exactly what it can do and he seemingly just destroys mask but then mask comes back turns the tables and starts kensei's rapid decline in this arc into a punching bag um kensei is later killed by gremi thamo and then resurrected by giselle as a zombie um and then he, you know, he, 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 he the whole zombie situation is kind of messy. I've always thought that it's not my favorite part of the final arc. I don't mind it because it's cool that we get to see the Iran car again, the Privron Espada, etc. But I've always thought this is the messiest part of the final arc. Um, as much as I do like Giselle, we probably could have lost that character. At least this fight, because it does kind of make this whole section a bit messy. Kensei becomes their zombie and then... After that, they become Mayuri zombie, and then they he end up helping Byakuya against Pepe, and then they're never seen again. And the whole situation is really weird. Um, and you get, like, I guess, cool moments where Kensei beats up Hisagi. The zombie stuff is weird. And I've kind of mentioned before that I think the Vizards were treated not great, and then that's basically the last time you see him. Uh, it's... You know, he's healed at some point off screen by Mayuri and then it's the end of the series. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, the Thousand Year Blood War goes south very quickly for Kensei and Rose. Uh, Shinji at least holds on for a little while longer. He at least makes it to Varvelt um, before being one shot. But Kensei and Rose don't. They they suffer the same fate as Common War, essentially. Um well, they end up staying down below. And it's a bit of a shame. It is a shame that Kubo... I don't know if he just ran out of ideas for them or if he wanted there to be captain casualties and chose the Vizards or whatnot. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, they don't get a great time of it. Looking at his fights then, and there's not a huge amount to go off, uh, as it is with most of the Vizards. Like I said, Kensei doesn't really fight anyone in the fake Karakura Town arc, which was the first big chance for the Vizards to actually have a fight. Um, so his is unfortunately off-screened. His battle in Term at the Pendulum is pretty cool, however, actually seeing him as a fully hollow-fied monstrosity going completely ham on the rest of the Vizards is really cool. Um, and then in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, he only really gets the one fight, and then it's it's just the one proper fight. The rest of it, like I said, is a bit of a mess. But the one proper fight is a couple of chapters against Master Masculine where we really get to see what his Bankai Tekken Tachikaze can do. And essentially, this is where that detonation power is really kind of emphasized. 
when he punches someone in his Barnakai, when it makes contact, it will continually burst into them as though they are being rapidly punched over and over, but he just holds his fist there instead. You know, it's not the craziest ability ever. It's not the most visually spectacular ability. There's a really cool panel where he's just wailing on Mask, and, you know, Mask is clearly feeling the impact. Um, But other than that, that's pretty much all you see of his Barnakai, which is a shame, but it was nice that Kubo took the time to delve a bit deeper into it. And then later on, like I said, he helps Biakio versus Pepe, uses Sandbag Beat again, um, and goes hand-to-hand against Hisagi. You don't really ever get to see Tachikaze again, unfortunately. He just uses hand-to-hand combat, um, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, unfortunately, that's basically it for Kensei's battles. And finally, to wrap the character up, let's take a brief look at his relationships. I think he has two major relationships in the series. The first one is Hisagi, obviously. Uh, now, Hisagi is saved by him in turn back the pendulum. It's a nice moment that Kubo didn't need to include, but he does anyway. Um, and he creates this relationship between Kensei and Hisagi, essentially to explain the origin of the 69 on Hisagi's face. Kensei saves him from this monstrous hollow. And there's, again, like I said, great moment where he's like, Shuhei's a strong name. You know, toughen up, stop crying, smile, you're alive. That's all that matters. Again, showing he's not good at dealing with kids. Um, despite having Mashiro around all the time. But it's a, a, it's a good moment. It's a good moment, and it fosters this relationship. And like I said earlier in the video, their relationship's handled kind of weirdly, though, because, you know, you, 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 you've always known that Hisagi has this tattoo. Where does it come from? I have no idea. Then in turn about the pendulum, you find out that actually he has this kind of crazy level of reverence for Kensei Muguruma. Okay. When Kensei arrives in fake Karakura Town, I think most people were expecting some kind of reunion, even though they've never really met before, between the two of them. And Hisagi, like, looks up into the sky and he sees Kensei and he's like, oh my god, it's Kensei. And then they never speak. They never they never meet in fake Karakura Town. It's like, what? Okay. Uh, because, like I said, I really thought Kensei was going to join in the fight against Tozen, but he doesn't. Uh, and then the relationship is thankfully fleshed out a little bit in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Kensei has fully accepted Hisagi as his vice captain. They seem to get along. Kensei being the drill sergeant type character he is, is obviously quite hard on on uh, Hisagi. Um, but like I said, I think it works really well. There is a really weird moment in that training sequence that I've never understood. And I don't really get it. And basically... Kensei, you know, he gets Mashiro to beat Hisagi up, and he's like, if you don't pull, if you don't start fighting, you'll, she'll kill you. And he says, I'm not holding back. I'm not a pussy like Tozen was. And those are his exact words. And Hisagi said, basically says, I've always respected you, Captain, but you have no right to badmouth Captain Tozen like that. And what? I've never understood that. I don't get it. Of course he has every right to badmouth Tosin. Not only did Tosin betray his own captain, use his Barnkai to s- literally stab him in the back. He also aided him ruining Kensei's life, like making Kensei a fugitive, turning him into a holofied monstrosity. Um, even if the holification stuff hadn't happened, he's still cowardly for attacking Kensei the way he does. I think Kensei has every right to not like Tosin, you know, and... I get that Hisagi has always is always going to have some kind of uh, respect, I guess, in a way, for the man Tosin he at least thought he once was, but always weird to me. I guess the only way that scene makes any real sense is if Hisagi doesn't know about what happened between Kensei and Tosin, but I'd be surprised they hadn't talked about it at some point. I mean, Hisagi literally kills Tosin, so... I would have thought they were talked about it. So that's a bit weird. But on the whole, I like their relationship. And I like that he gets some screen time more than, like I said, Rose and Kira anyway. And then lastly, the last major relationship Kensei really has is with Mashiro, his vice captain, his main partner throughout the entire series. Um, that's, again, it's kind of cool, I guess, that Hisagi gets more screen time with Kensei in the final arc than Mashiro does because we know these two 
so well together. Um, but again, it's mostly a funny dynamic, and I really like it. I really like how Mashiro is like this child, this petulant brat, who can say it feels like has been lumbered with against his will. Always appreciated that. I thought it was really funny. Um, and they just bounce off each other really well. But Kensei obviously cares about her a lot. Like I said, when she gets taken out by Wanda Weiss in a single hit, Kensei is immediately on the scene like, I can't let this carry on. Um, and then, you know, starts fighting. Wanda Weiss, I like it. I think it works really well. I think their relationship is not the most fleshed out, but it's funny. And it's probably the most consistent relationship out of the Vizards. I guess Shinji and Hihori have quite a good relationship as well, quite antagonistic. Love and Rose have a friendship, at least in the Arankar arc. They never say a word to each other in the Thousand Year Blood War, which is weird. Um, so yeah, for me, Kensei and Mashiro, uh, I think they, they are, they are, they do have a good dynamic. And that's basically it for the character of Kensei Muguruma, the current and former captain of the 9th Division and a member of the Vizards. Like I said, I really like the guy. I love his design, particularly in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, but to me, he is a little one-dimensional and underutilized. Like, unfortunately, it feels like a lot of the Vizards are. But thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the character of Kensei. Do you enjoy his character? Uh, what do you think about how the way Kubo used him throughout the entire of Bleach? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. But until next time, guys, if you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.